Westbound Entertainment, Untold Story, Episode 3. I'm Hands with the Lens. I'm Pat Mendo. Bruh, and today we got Oakland's very own hard hitter, bruh. He's been doing it for a long time. He's been consistent. He's been on this grizzly. It don't stop. You feel me? You think? No, he's just getting started. You feel me? I'm talking about businesses, all everything, man. We grew up on this music. Today, we got Jay Stalin, man. What's poppin' with you, Jay? What's going down? Oh, what's poppin', man? You know, man. I'm gonna share a little bit of this uh, this rap life with y'all. I've been living for a long time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. See if we can uh, top some of the other stories. Right, right. <laughs> Most definitely. So, just to get out of my way for my own cause, did you, Jay Stalin, you got that name from the Soviet Union Communist Party, dude? Or how did yeah, that come about? Yeah, because we got the same initials. My name, my real initials start with a J and an S, too. And we like similar in height. So, when I was in the, like, the, the 11th grade, I had to do a paper on him. Oh, okay. So, you know, I read a whole book on him. And uh, I just, you know, I just seen a lot of similarities, you know. He was mad. I ain't too. trying to go kill up a whole country, though. But, uh, you he know, was mad, bro. besides that, man, you know. It, it was a lot of similarities, man. But you know, styling really mean like the man of steel. That's what right. styling means. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. That's man of steel like Superman. I, I had heard some rumors. Uh, somebody was talking about was it was it at the beginning of, of when you started rapping? Was it Jay Styling like Styling or? No, I never was like never that. Never like that. It always was S T A L I. Yeah, okay, okay. Oh, you okay. heard that before? Like, yeah, no, people didn't spell it like that, all oh, okay. type of shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, My yeah. tried to uh, like send me money and put J style and spell it like style. Like for one, you can't send money using a uh, rap name. Yeah, and right. for two, I don't even spell it like that. <laughs> right, <laughs> I'll take it. No, 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 no. Like for real, shit. this shit be crazy, but I, I have a question though. Uh, so that song never blink you did with the jack how did that come about because that's one of my all-time favorite songs you feel me all any little nigga that was growing up in the bay that was struggling or whatever that's the anthem from right. any hood bro we man, i remember being sitting in the car with all you feel me my partners and we all singing that song at the same time your verse the 20 verse and the jacket verse how did that song come about uh we was uh I was, um, I had just signed with Richie Rich. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Like, when I was a little nigga, I probably was like, I think I was 21. I think I was like 21, yeah. Oh, maybe was I, was I younger than that? Hold on. Yeah, no, I was younger than that. I probably was like 20, 19, 20. But I had just signed with Rich, and uh, I was in the grill, you know what I'm saying? Working, mm -hmm. just working, yeah. recording, and Jacka. Used to come in there all the time. He was working on uh, the Jack Artist album. They all used to come. Him, PK, Rob Lowe, mm -hmm. Hustler, FedEx. They all used to come, you know what I'm saying, all the time. Dub 20, uh, Montana. Everybody in there me? big. Yeah. Everybody, you know what I'm saying? They used, to be, they used to be in the big room in there working on Jack album. And I'll be in the back room, you know what I'm saying, working on my shit. And um, I ain't had no weed one day. Like, we had, you know what I'm saying, never met. You know, we had cross paths. Right, right, you know? right. I'm saying cross paths, like, in, in the studio. Right, but right. we ain't really talk to each other. Right. We just, like, I knew that's a jack of, you know, they right. know who the fuck I was. Right, right, I was right. just some, you know, <laughs> some little nigga in there who Richie Rich just said, that's my new artist. You feel right. me? So, anyway, you know what I'm saying, I, I had no weed. So, I went to Jack, and then, um... I'm like, y'all got some weed, can I buy some weed? And yeah. then, you know, Jack, a Jack, a real nigga. Jack, like, I ain't got no weed for sale. Like, you can hit this shit, though. Right. Like, you come smoke with us. Yeah. yeah, so I came from my studio, went in there with them, nigga. And we just in there smoking, nigga. You know what I'm saying? I asked Jack, I'm like, come here. I asked him, would he, listen, would he come here some of my shit? Right. Like, he had all, they had already heard me rap before from from Richie Rich album. Oh, okay. Cause I, um, 
I wrote three hooks on that album, and I was on the, and I was also on the songs that I wrote the hooks for. So I was on like three songs on Rich album. So they had already heard me rap, but they never heard none of my own shit. So you know what I'm saying? We we went after we smoked or whatever, whatever. We went back to the other studio. I let Jack hear some of my shit. And then Jack just being a real nigga, him, that nigga said, I got one for you. Huh. Mm-hmm. And we went back to the other studio, nigga, and he played that Never Blink. The rest is history. Like, it right. happened right there. It's black. The, like, yeah. it happened right there. Like, we did that, like, that was, that, that was like, the first day we met. Like, he put me on that song, like, the first day he met me. Damn, and then who would have knew that song would have caught fire and have been mm-hmm. the song it is today, you feel me? That's dope. So, y'all shot that video in your neighborhood, right? Or what was yeah. that in town? Yeah, no, we shot that in Cypress Village in my okay, hood. Right. Hell yeah. That's where you grew up, right? Uh, Cypress Village in the town, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. How, so, around that time, how was how was that environment growing up in Cypress Village in, in the town? Because I know, it's like, it probably wasn't easy. Oakland was I mean, an easy just, place to grow like, up. Around that age, everybody was trying to get some money. We used right, to right. be like, it's crazy because I still think about it. Like, now, like, have you ever saw Paid in Full? Yeah. Remember how all them niggas used to be in the, front of the, the right, stage? Right, right. The stage. The stage. Right, right, right. That's how Tistry used to be. Yeah. Like, it used to just be like 50 niggas out there. The beehive. Anywhere right. from, from, from 14 niggas to, to 45 to, to, to 50. In their thick. Just right. all, just everybody out there hustling. Like, nigga, that Trying shit looked paid. like Harlem, nigga. It was just so many people, but everybody was out there hustling. Niggas out there selling dope. Selling weed, motherfuckers pushing buggies, collecting cans, nigga. All this shit getting their hustle on the yeah, game was and, 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 and it was just, it was flourishing. You right, know what right. I'm saying? It was probably a negative flourish. Right, yeah. right. But sh- they doing something, they pushing for a cause. Dude. But that's how it was back then. Like, every, because we got in the game so young, we didn't even, we just wanted Jordans and shit. Right, right, you know what I'm right, saying? Right. We didn't even want nothing. We right. just wanted Jordans and, and little fly. buckets to drive to school and right. shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, but everybody was out there selling dope, selling weed, and just, wow, nigga, shooting dice. Right. Motherfuckers stripping niggas. Right. Motherfuckers Here, getting shot, killed, shit. all this shit. Just right. like all this shit. Like now you ride to that motherfucker, you see about, right, about 10 people outside. It's different. It's a different time, man. Right. I remember first moving to Pittsburgh too. The same thing. It was just I was from downtown 10th Street and Beacon in Pittsburgh, and it was thick down there. I mean, it used to be 30, 40 people in front of the store, just big yeah, chilling. Yeah. Right. But it's the same thing. It was just like a different. It was. It, I feel a little bit more loose back then. The yeah. killing, the murdering, yeah, well, all that shit. Like the mania shit you seen that as a youngster though. Oh, as a kid, I don't when know. I, yeah, no. Like when I was a kid, like we probably was like, I think we was like maybe eight, nine. But uh, we all snuck in the Fermi pool. Like, you know, the Fermi in West Oakland, the Fermi Park, they got a pool and shit. So we had all snuck in the Fermi pool at nighttime. And uh, rest in peace, my nigga A.W., my nigga Aaron drowned. Damn, Damn for real? Yeah, that's man. all the way so that was like, That's that was like, shit. No, that was, that was the second time I experienced death. Well, he, the first he didn't time know I to swim? Or just... yeah, he didn't know how to swim. Oh, that's the man, first time right? I experienced death was when... Uh, my older brother passed away when I was five years old. He swallowed some uh, cocaine in a high speed chase, but that was the mm-hmm. first time I experienced death. Mm-hmm. And then my second time experiencing death was when we snuck in the pool and my homie died. Like, I'm sorry he was to hear like that, my bro. friend. That's he was, I think, I think AW was like 11. I think I was like eight, he was like 11. I was gonna ask him, like, that's not who that is on your chain right no, there. No, right? no, yeah. no, this is my little brother. He, he just passed. He, he just passed uh, January 4th of this year. I'm sorry to hear that, bro. Yeah. Yeah. So you linking up with Richie Rich, bro, how did that come about? With Rich, it was like, um, have you heard of 415? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you know. Brody Loke and 415, right? Yeah. yeah Shout yeah, out yeah. to Brody Loke. Yeah. Brody Loke, uh, you know what I'm saying? He used to live in Cypress Village, where we from. Okay. Yeah, but um, so DJ Duro, mm-hmm. who put 415, well, he didn't put 415 together, but he was the producer. Mm-hmm from 415 and uh, him and my, my best friend who I said passed away, I mean my older brother who I said passed away when yeah. I was, him and DJ Durrell was best friends. Oh, okay. So I had caught a dope case when I was 16. I had a curfew, so I had to go home. I had to go in the house hella early because my PO would be tripping, right. you know what I'm saying? So I already wanted to get into the rap anyway. 
So, I had seen Daryl one day outside of, uh, I seen Daryl one day on the corner of uh, 26 in West Oak, 26 in Market. I was on lunchtime at school because I went to McClyman's. Yeah. So I seen Daryl at the store on 26 and uh, I'm like, uh, I've been writing this shit. Like I'm trying to get into this rap shit like DJ. Like this one, this one Daryl had just, um, he had just uh, left No Limit and was starting his own company. Because DJ Daryl mm -hmm. has signed with No Limit because um, Steady Mobbing was his group. You know, from mm -hmm. Oakland, when Bathgate yeah. was in Bath there, right? Bathgate and yeah. Crooked Eyes. Yeah. Steady Mobbing was his group. So when he signed Steady Mobbing to No Limit, he signed to No, he signed to no Limit too as a producer. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's how uh, he produced that shit on Snoop. On album Snoop's album, no yeah. Steady, Steady Mobbing on the beat. Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. that was classic shit. That was on the Dog Father, right? No, um... Uh, oh, no, The Game Is To Be Sold. The Game Is To Be Sold, I have to be told. Yeah. Like G-A-M-E, -E, that's, that's my thing. Yeah. And there ain't no rules when you win this game. Yeah, you know that was me? a DJ that's girl. Right? That, that was slap. That was definitely my favorite song off that album. So then, um... So I seen Daryl. I'm like, I'm trying to rap. Woo, woo, woo. Like, he like, come to my house. So I came to my... I, I went to his house after school one day. Me and my uh, me and my cousin Sid, rest in peace, he passed away too. So me and Sid, we walked to Daryl house from Mac. We walk all the way, all the way through the bottom. We smoking. You know what I'm saying we walk all the way through the bottom. We get there. I, I I lose my 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 notebook. Damn. I got a whole notebook, nigga, full of raps, nigga. I'm this my shot, nigga. I'm like, ooh, mm. nigga, I'm finna go and rap all this go shit crazy. to Daryl. Like he gotta fuck with me. That's cool, bro. bro. I, I get all the way to Daryl house, bro. And I check my backpack. I, I think I had it right here. I check, but anyway, I don't got the book. Me and Sid, nigga, we backtrack all the way to Mac, nigga. Damn. Don't find the book. So I never make it to Daryl house that day. So I never make it that day. So I ain't see Daryl again to like Two weeks later, I seen him again, cause... Uh, was he hot at you, you didn't show up? <laughs> nah, nah. He, he wasn't tripping nah, on That nigga's busy. Right, that. right, right. You know I'm saying, like, I seen him again, cause his mom stayed in Cyprus. Oh, okay. So I seen him coming from his mom's house. And I'm like, DJ, like, I was on my way, whoop, whoop. Like, I lost my book, bud. He like, all right, like, um, come today. Like, you don't need a book or whatever. Like, right. just, mm -hmm. just, just come, just come hang out. Right, yeah, right. come by. Yeah. So yeah, but anyway, so I still went and bought me a book, so I went there, and uh, we just was in there fucking around, he playing hella beats, I'm in there writing to the beats, you know what I'm saying, this motherfucker's coming over, motherfucker's leaving, like Crooked Eye was, Crooked Eye was coming over, like, uh, he had his group, the Block Monsters, like, they used to be in there recording this shit, so anyway, long story short, this go on for like a year. So I'm just, you feel me? I'm, 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 I'm going to Daryl House every right, day right, right. after school, right? Like, cause yeah, I'm yeah. on probation. Right. I told my probation officer what I was doing. So instead of he let me go to the library or he let me go to the studio, uh, you period. Still. Yeah, like I had to yeah, have, for sure. like I had to have Daryl talk to him and all type right, of shit. Right. Like you feel me? So that's Chad. That's player. Anyway, to make school. a long story short, I'm going to that nigga house every day, and I'm just writing, 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 writing. I ain't recording. I ain't recording. A year go by, I don't really record. I'm just writing, writing, writing. I do one song. Rich come over. You know him and Rich still hella cool, cause Daryl always producing for Rich. Daryl produced a lot of sh a lot of that uh a lot of that music on uh Richie Rich album Half mm -hmm. Thing, mm -hmm. and he did some of that shit on um the album Rich did with Def Jam. Right. But they still had a great relationship from being in the group four and five right. together. So nigga, it was like the first time Rich came over. Like I had never met Rich. Like that was like the first time Rich came over. Nigga, Daryl was in there playing that song I did. I never forget it. It's called What You Moving. What you doing, girl? What you moving, girl? Who you screwing? I'm trying to be screwing you. Uh. Like it was a simple little young shit. It was dope though. And uh shit, I don't know. Rich liked it that shit. Nigga, and he told Daryl, like, uh, Bring the little nigga to the, uh, bring the little nigga to the grill. Right. You know what I'm saying? 
You was fucking with you after that one. You was like, yeah, I went to the real. grill. I went to the grill, nigga, for that one day, nigga, and it was, nigga, it was. It was cookies it was, after it was that. History, nigga. It was cookies. That's dope, bro. That's peas. What yeah, are you, Richie dope. Rich? Fucking with you? Yeah, yeah, I think. Nigga, Come it was on, cookies. bro. It was like it was meant. That was meant. That was like this and that happened. Like right those there, those songs that I did on um Rich album, Duro did those. Rich got those beats from Duro because Rich, he liked how I sounded over Duro beats. So okay. he got those beats specifically for me to rap on for his album. But he got them specifically from Duro because how he heard the shit I was doing with Duro. You know what I'm right, saying? Right. And he wanted that same vibe. Right. That's dope. Duro right. did all three beats that I did for Rich. He did all three beats. That's tight. You still got a solid relationship with Duro? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's and, dope. And Rich. Mm-hmm. And we love them niggas to death. Right, right. That that party jumping song you you did with the Jack is that like I'm well duh happened after uh, Never Blink or yeah, no like after like after Never Blink nigga we just we we was like it was like yeah, you know wow. you know Jack was Jack was a a, a a real leader like teacher type of nigga because he he was very humble and he never wanted nothing from nobody like all he he just he just wanted to see niggas win and gave niggas right. straight game so yeah, after man. that. Me and Jack, like we always was hella cool. You know what what was saying? your favorite memory with the Jack? Uh, on one of his birthdays, uh, my bra cooked for him when I was uh, when I was living in the Dubs. When I was with my little bra, my bra and my mama cooked for him on one of his birthdays. He came over and ate with us and shit. That's so, tight. I was in there roasting each other all this yeah, shit. Yeah, like that was my nigga, nigga. Right, like right, you right. feel me? Like Jack, me and Jack was hella cool. Jack. What's your favorite song like, you made? Like you got a favorite song you ever made? My favorite song is Girl and Girl and Girl and Get On Out, out There. there. <laughs> I used to call that motherfucker and request that motherfucker on the radio before I even met that nigga. That's crazy. That's, yeah, that's, that's ultimate blap right there. Like that's crazy, you feel yeah. me? Like, And it all just started because you you didn't have no weed, you feel me? That was, that's <laughs> cra- yeah, but like I'm saying, I knew who he yeah, was at yeah, the right. real. He didn't know who I was. Him. I'm like, that's the get out there, nigga. That's a great fucking story, though. That's plenty. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the go and get out there, nigga. When you made Gas Nation, was that your first album you made? I recorded on behalf of the streets yeah, for the streets. first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it didn't come out first. Oh. But okay. it was the first album I recorded. Like, Early Morning Shift came out first. I recorded that second. And then. Real World came out after that. Like I recorded Real World like third. Stamp of approval. The you ain't on mixtape. Like we did like like alright, so we did early morning shift. You ain't on mixtape. Real World West Open One. Uh Stamp of Approval. Stamp of Approval. You got hella body of work. Gangsta shit, like I like, I did like two or three mixtapes with Livewire, and then I did like four mixtapes of my own before we dropped on behalf of the streets, which was the debut album. But we recorded on behalf of the streets first, so we did the album and just had that motherfucker sitting there and just did all this other shit before it to hype it up. You started that? Yeah. yeah so who's started. like the original founding members of Livewire? Well, you was a founder, but who was the original, your, your Ace Boom Booms? And the, like, like I, I, I started Livewire, came up with the whole name, all of that by myself. It was supposed to be me and my nigga Lil Dane and my, uh, my brother Jasper, you know what I'm saying? My brother Jasper from Philly, he passed away too. But it, it, was, it was just, it was, it was supposed to be us three, but... Jazz was in jail in Philly, and it was just me and Dame. So then, Dame went to jail. I'm saying I got that name Livewire. I got that name from Belly. When uh, when DMX was talking about the mm-hmm. nigga Mark, he was like, right, you know right. the nigga Mark, he a real Livewire live man. Yeah. You know the nigga do anything right, at right. any given time, man. Right. Like I'm like nigga do anything mm-hmm. at any given time. I'm like that's us, nigga. Right. We do live wires. <laughs> right you after that me? was his. Yeah. Yeah. So then um. It was supposed to be me, like it was me, Jazz, and Dane, but Jazz caught a body in Philadelphia, so he was in jail for manslaughter. So then um, it's me and Dane, and then Dane go to jail. Dane get 24 years for a home invasion or some shit or whatever, whatever. And then... Um, it was really you to the noodle pack. 
but Dame, Dame and Shady Nate was like hella close. Like mm-hmm. they used to rap together before I even started rapping. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I just got that 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 push early on from from Rich. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So. You know what I'm saying I was in I was in better I was in better position because I knew more people that was in the industry at right, the time. Right, right, right. But Dame and Shady, them niggas had been rapping before me, like been hella saucy. Like everybody in West Oakland knew them niggas was raw. Right, mm-hmm. right. You know what I'm saying? But then you know what I'm saying, Dame went to jail, you know what I'm saying? And then um I had ran into Shady and I had Shady come to the uh, mechanics uh, I had Shady come to the mechanics studio to get on my album, you know what I'm saying? And, you know what I'm saying, I already was a fan of Shady because he already was hella dope, and then yeah, him and my nigga was hella close. And I just felt like, you know what I'm saying, I owed that to Shady, like, you feel me? Like, Dame mm-hmm. ain't here, nigga, but I'm here. And put his name you feel me? Yeah, 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 you know what I'm saying? Real nigga. And uh, it started with me and Shady, and then, you know, Shady, he hella close with Jonah, and then I've been knowing all B my life, I mean, all my life, but, you mm-hmm. know, right? Then we all put it, we, we put it together. Me, Shady, John, or all be. Nice player. Yeah. You know what I'm And then after that, that's when everybody else came on. Uh, who was it? Lil Blood was Live, live Wire, uh, Filthy, everybody else. Yeah. I wanted all those uh, key players come in. Blood and, uh, Blood and Shady used to hustle on the same block. You know what I'm saying? And then, you know, I used been to, the exam, yeah, I used to, I, I used to drive through there, you know, like when I, you know, like when I got a car and shit, you know, niggas got, I used to drive through, you know, and be picking up Shady and be fucking with Shady. And then Blood always want to come fuck with us, you right, feel right, me? Right. And then we let him come one day and yeah. then, you know, then it was Blood. Yeah. Then, then it was Blood and then my little cousin Maybach. That's like Maybach, that, that's my little cousin. Like, I think I met that nigga at a family funeral, or I think I met that nigga at my daddy's funeral or somewhere. And then uh, he like, I'm rapping, and you know, like, that's my cousin. So I'm yeah. like, that yeah, was Maybach. Right, 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 right. You feel me? But you know, like, you know what I'm saying? Basically just passing on right. Richie Rich just being able to help people. Yeah, people I didn't even know mm-hmm. that you was signed to Richie That's hella dope. I just learned from you today. That's peace. Dead or alive, who's your top five favorite artists, bro? Like, and it had an influence on the way you make music. Top five dead or alive favorite artists. Prince is my favorite artist of all time. Like okay. Prince and Tupac, they like one and one. Right. But like Prince, Tupac, DMX, 8-Ball, I like Drake. I, I can't let you Drake out. Drake, bro. Like he, he Drake, Drake not one of my favorites, but he just, you just can't leave him. Like, like see, yeah. I, 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 I let it turn into a, a best thing. But like, Pop Prince X, A Ball, like Kiss. Okay. Like they're my yeah. favorite right. rappers. Like they're yeah. my favorite rapper, rap. Like right. Drake, my favorite song maker. Right, right, right. You feel yeah, me? Like, it's it's a difference yeah. between a motherfucker just rapping, just gassing, and then a motherfucker who just make great, beautiful songs. Right, you right, feel right, me? right, right. Mm-hmm. The game needed Drake, you know, because he made you do make blast. So you saying you was going to mechanic studios? Weren't you signed with like? I think they had some like Zoo Zoo Production or something yeah. like that. No, we still Zoo Live Wire. We been Zoo. We gonna stay Zoo Live Wire. Right, right, right. Right. Shit. You know, when when you start messing with the mechanics, like well, how did how did y'all start? Uh, I just I just met them at the grill. You know what I'm saying and uh. I, I met them at the grill like around around the same time I was fucking with Jacka and shit. And um, I start fucking with the mechanics tough because I had done my album with Rich mm-hmm. and it was just sitting there. And you know, I was young. Right. So I, you feel me? I was young and hungry, so right, I wanted right. to get on. Right. Nigga, I went to the mechanics like, nigga, I got this album with Rich. He ain't putting motherfucker out. Let's do an album. I'm fucking with y'all. Right, period. Period. And you know what I'm saying? That's how it happened. Well, uh, they went through their little thing with Rich for a while. Like, we never, me and Rich never fell out. Never, never. Because right. you couldn't get mad at me. I, I was a kid. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he, he was kind of mad at the mechanics. Like, y'all, like, y'all niggas should have knew better. Y'all stole my kid. <laughs> <laughs> y'all stole my like, kid. Y'all stole my kid. Right. We all cool. Wasn't man. he like the first artist on the Def Jam out the Bay Area or something? I don't yeah, know, something for like sure. that. Yeah. yeah. That's dope. So you got a, you, we were talking earlier, you was talking about how you got, you got speakers and shit coming out now too? 
Oh yeah, I got uh, you know I got uh, my uh, my Bluetooth live wire speakers. They're a phone charger too. Yeah. So uh, cordless, cordless, cordless. Uh -huh. innovative right there. Yeah, bro. like yeah, so you, that's you fresh. know you can play the motherfucker. You sitting in the hot tub or the pool with your bitch. Throw the motherfucker on. Right. You know what I'm saying? With your phone, your phone. You, you feel, feel me? me? Your phone finna mm -hmm. die. Just put really? your phone right on top and start charging while it's still playing the music. Yeah, you know, how can they get that from you? How can they get that? Oh, you can uh, go to my store, man, www.livewireclothingstore.com, man. Yeah. Or you can check us out. You can pull up to 1501 Coffee Road, Modesto, California, right next door to the Live Wire Barbershop. Come you on, feel man. Me. I sleep on that. Modesto, wait, so wake up. How many, so besides music, you're doing business too, which I think is a great thing because really? I feel like you can pass your business down to your kids for generations, like six generations to come, even, you know, even after that because I know they learning so much from you. They so game, they're going to be so gamed up. How many shops do you got open? Yeah, we got one in Oakland. We got one in Modesto. We got a live wire barbershop in Oakland. We got a live wire barbershop in Modesto. And we got the live wire clothing store next door in Modesto. We got the live wire barbershop in Oakland. It's uh, 1809 Third Half. It's like right over there by the lake. My brother uh, Nitty run that motherfucker. Shout out to Nitty. Feel me? Mm -hmm. We got the uh, live wire hip hop barbershop right here in Modesto. You know what I'm saying? And then we got the Live Wire clothing store right next door. They're in the same plaza, like they're in the plaza with a Walmart and all this shit. That's, so you feel that's great. Cool. Yeah, for sure. For so sure. would you come up first, the clothing or the barbershop? Uh, the barbershop came first. No, the, barber, the barbershops came first, like in storefronts. But uh, we, we've we been had them selling the online. Yeah, we've yeah, been yeah, having yeah. merch and yeah, shit yeah, for sure. since, since the beginning. How'd you come up with the barbershop? What made you want to out of everything? Like, buy the barbershop? Cause it ain't really too much of an overhead. Right. You know what I'm saying it's, right. it's not like a it's not like an inventory. You right. feel right. me? Once you open a barbershop, it ain't really too much inventory. Like with the clothing store, you, you feel me? You got to buy a hundred thousand dollars worth of clothes right. before you even sell right. one right. piece. Right. 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 Cause the store has to be mm -hmm. packed. Yeah. It has to have enough uh, and supply. Then, and then once you sell, you gotta re up. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? You, haircuts. You sell a haircut every day. You don't right. run out of them. There's right, nothing right. to re up. And yeah. you go up in there and get what, lined and be. I'm saying, you, what you go, you break your clippers. The, right, right. The clippers <laughs> break. That ain't nothing. All you right. gotta replace is, is clippers. Right. That's you right. Feel right. There's, there's no right. overhead once That's you right. get it. Once you get it going, it's just steady revenue coming in. Right. Yeah. You ain't got. You ain't. You feel me? Like I'm saying, because I come from selling dope. You feel me? There's no. There's 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 very 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 minimum re up right with barbershops you right. don't gotta re up like that right, right. so you can save and stack more money right, right. Mm -hmm. especially you so dope because for sure they might have businesses yeah, i don't want to see everybody running around with barbershops now <laughs> <laughs> Period. yeah you said you said in the bar with that especially with the bluetooth come on yeah. bro. i don't really know a lot of artists that's doing it, especially out of the bay area you said you, you feel me saying that you know you're doing it um <laughs> did you have a relationship with mac dre um not a um not a long one Right. I met him at the grill. Like the grill was the place to be. It was popping at the grill. <laughs> yeah, it was lit. Like, but no, like I like I met Dre at the grill. Like you know what I'm saying. But like I said, I was um I was signed to Rich. You know what I'm saying. But me and Dre, me me and Dre was cool. Dre expressed expressed interest in signing me. You know what I'm saying once before. But I was um I was just signed to Rich. But uh yeah, like Dre was always vibrant. You know what I'm saying. Signed to this nation. Huh? Vibrant, uplifting. That's how I still I still ended up. Fucking with this after Dre passed because you know what I'm saying like Kilo and um, like Diggs like they always knew that like like that Dre liked me. Right, right, right. Yeah, he was dope. Yeah, he was going crazy. So, what's your favorite food, bro? What you like dining on at all time? Shit, I don't even eat other shit no more. I don't mm -hmm. eat uh, I don't eat pork. And I don't eat beef no more. Okay, I'm vegan, so I feel you on that. Yeah, There's a lot weird. of people doing that's a movement right now, man. That's a movement. Yeah, but got my favorite thing right now is like uh, smothered turkey wings, rice and gravy, shit like that. Yeah, Soul right. food, greens. Right, right. Like I can't wait till Christmas, nigga, eat some uh, some dressing and macaroni and garnish hens and, and all that type fire. of shit. Oh, I ain't gonna tell <laughs> that's some pressure right now. Yeah, I used to, I used to, I used to cook the fuck out of pot roast though. Yeah. I made a mean pot roast, boy. <laughs> just just mean pot roast. 
I <laughs> made a mean pop roast before I swear, before I stop eating beef though. No, he was. I'm gonna go out with a bang. Uh, I should we'll be, the day before I went vegan. I went to uh, where to go eat at? It's Ruth's Chris oh, Cuddy. Yeah. Fire, I'm talking about this shrimp mac and cheese. steak. Come on, <laughs> hey, come on, really good. I, I probably still got that picture on my right, Instagram right now. So thick, blood. Yeah. Them motherfuckers look like a some blood. Them yeah. that's blood. Yeah. If, yeah. if you yeah. hide, yeah. that shit like a big ass turd. <laughs> come on, man. Like, blood, that's like blood. So that's why you know, be taking that shit. It look like shit. I tell them so. You know, you know, you know how you know how that like baby hell thick. The filet in y'all. Right, right. I tell him take my shit and cut it in half to make it like two small ones. Right, right. Yeah. Cause bro, I can't eat that thick ass shit, yeah. bro. That, you know, like that beef, that shit be right. digested, fucked up. Oh, yeah, you know, constipated. Shit. Boy, I'm feeling that shit right now. I'm just talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> On the real. Yeah, yeah. That shit tell the funny. Who got a lighter? I told y'all niggas I'm gonna be in my, my little joint. What what's uh what's your favorite like top favorite mob movies ever? Oh, the last Don, man, the last oh, Don. Right. But like um, I read a lot of books, not books, but like I do a lot of audio books. Right, right, right. You know what I'm right. saying like because mm -hmm. I because I, I be while you be driving and shit or I something. I be on the road yeah, a lot, yeah. yeah so I listen to a lot of audio books and uh. I just listen to uh I would I, I would uh, encourage anybody to listen to this Double Cross. It's the okay. Sam Giacana story. I'm gonna have to go. The, uh, <coughs> Sam Giacana was uh, the the uh, Chicago outfit boss. Okay, I'm gonna have to do from like do. from uh in in the sixties, like in, in the, like the late fifties, sixties. But yeah, that 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 book is hella um hella good. You know what I'm saying it's because. He's supposed to be the one, allegedly, who orchestrated the hit on Kennedy we and his brother. Oh, you know what okay. I'm saying like he's supposed to be like him, uh, him and a few other mafia niggas. Like they supposed to allegedly they supposed to be the ones who orchestrated. You Did know, he say his reason Kennedy why out. they was doing it? Because he was Kennedy's because they, um, um, No, um, Kennedy's father, Joe Kennedy. Mm -hmm. Um, he was a uh, he sold bullet liquor in the prohibition days. Oh, okay, okay. So yeah, he yeah. was very familiar, and um, he knew a lot of mobsters and shit. Right, right, so right. when Kennedy was running for president, you know the mob they run these cities and shit that they in. So he's supposed to have got the Chicago outfit to secure the Chicago vote. You know Chicago, yeah. a big ass city. Right, right, right. You feel me? You know Chicago, one of them cities. I That's can the whole boat. The right. gangster city, like, Calif yeah. like California. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Illinois, New York, yeah. like Texas, like them cities, like them states as well. You feel me? Yeah. And Chicago is yeah. like the whole state down here. Yeah. But anyway, uh, yeah, they say uh, the book. They say Joe Kennedy got them to they help get him in office, and in, in return. He was supposed to not crack down on the mafia, you know, because J. Edgar Hoover was even, he was denying the mafia even existed. Right, right. But uh, he made his brother attorney general, and they, and they, and they waged all out war on the mafia. That's main, and that's how that shit went down. That's why the book called Double Cross. Right. Nigga was double crossed by the president, nigga. Man. Do you feel like books are sometimes more in detail than movies, or how do you feel about that? See the reason why the reason why books are more detailed than movies because you can't see them, so right. they have to they ha have to explain everything in detail. When you're watching a movie, it's not gonna tell you what kind of car that they just right, got right, in right, right. Right. because you can see the car. Right. But in a book, it's gonna be like he just stepped in a 1979 Fleetwood Classic yeah, interior leather shine, seats yeah, right. with the big bubble eyes. And you'd be like, damn, that's what it was. It was like the first one that had the sunroofs. None of the other ones had it. So it, 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 it has to go into detail so you can see it with your mind. You feel right, right. You can't see it with your eyes, right, right. but you can see it with your mind. That's why books are like that. That's why the Godfather movie is three hours, nigga, and the book is thirteen hours. Right. You feel me? Right. That's why. Like the audio book, nigga. The audio book thirteen hours. That's man. Like nigga, that shit take nigga yeah. a week to listen to, <laughs> right? Nigga, unless you just do it all in one time. Straight thirteen. Do you feel like that's straight. why you good at making music? Cause you could 
describe something really well. No, oh, I just I feel like I'm good at making music just because I really love it. Like I right. never I've never ever went in the studio thinking about making some money. Right. I always just thought about making music, dope music. Genuine shit. How, how do you when you wanted it, when you knew you wanted that's what you wanted to do, or you took interest in it? Feel me? Like when I got out of jail. When I caught that dope case as a kid, I was like the biggest fan of music before. Like I told you, like Prince. Prince is my right. favorite artist. Like I was the kid in sixth grade listening to Prince and Michael Jackson in my headphones, nigga, and everybody else listening to whoever right. they listen to, rappers right, right, and right. shit. You feel me? Like I always listen to everything. Like even as a child. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like Careless Whisper is my right, right. one of my favorite songs. It's black, you know what I'm saying? By Wham. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's one of my favorite songs. You like rock and roll? I like uh, alternative, soft yeah. rock. Like, yeah. I don't fuck with that hard metal shit. But yeah. you should know, be like, I like, um, like, my favorite, my favorite artist, my favorite artist like that is James Blunt and Rob Thomas. Like, Rob okay. Thomas, the lead singer of Matchbox 20. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Rob Thomas, dope. Like, I, I've, been to, I've been to see him in concert twice. Okay, yeah. I went to see him with Matchbox 20 and then I went to see him solo. See ya. Because after he, after he put out his solo album, I went to see him solo. I would've never guessed that, bro. You know what I'm saying? I fuck with Nickel back. Mm -hmm. I wanna ask you, bro, not even like, on no negative shit, bro. I've seen something where you had to get on a nigga Melon one time at a bar or something. And I was like, look at him getting on, but I, I want to know why. Like, you not, not even on the next to bring some negative shit up, but I, like, what, what, bro? He said something to you crazy? Yeah, yeah, but it ain't even about the talking. That nigga just invaded my space. <laughs> right? That nigga, oh, you okay. can talk all you want to, but that right, nigga right, right. walked up on me. Like, you could talk all you want to, but do that shit from right, back right, here. Right, right, like, right. Don't walk up on me. Don't come right. close to me. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was with my baby mama. You know what I'm saying? We, we, we was in there. So he was really we was in there having lunch. You know what I'm saying? No, yeah. like. He was really on some other shit. He pushed her. You know what I'm oh, saying? Man? He, oh, yeah, he for sure. Oh, yeah, you got to get out of here. do the same thing. So, oh, shit. What I got on this mountain, too. Split his shit. Right, right. What are some new projects you coming out with? What's some, what's some new albums, new songs you coming out with right now? Shit, I just <laughs> dropped a new album called uh, Bay Area State of Mind. Got the new single band from The Catalyst. You know, cause uh, the Catalyst and Santa, Jose, I mean Santa Cruz, ain't really banned the nigga. Why they ban you? <laughs> oh shit, you know, guns and things. Oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> Miscellaneous. Miscellaneous. Allegedly, allegedly, they said I had a gun on me. Yeah. Allegedly, huh? Yeah, allegedly. Okay. Yeah, that's crazy. So, I know you just uh, what was that new song you just came out with? I don't know if you dropped it, but mm -hmm, you know what I'm saying. Oh yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's on that's on the mechanics album. Yeah. Go get that Domus right now. Go get that Bay Area stand up right, right now. Check out them new videos. We just shot the video for everything. You know what I'm saying? Who shot we your working, video? Man. You shot my video, nigga. We're fun entertainment. We yeah, in there. Me. Shout out Timbo, Bro Jackson, A Jones official, Pet Mendo, Mikey Delau. Feel me, the mechanic, Jay Stalin. That was a dope. That was that was a dope night, bro. Yeah, and I had fun that night. Yeah. You good energy to be around, bro. Ah, oh, yeah. it's a vibe every time, baby. You it's already just know. It's dope. You feel me? It it's not everybody sure. like that. You know what I mean? So it's good to get around like you feel me, like like-minded vibes. Or, you know what I mean? Just everybody on the same path. Love what fun. I do, man. Right. And, and and I I appreciate you know what I'm saying other people that love their craft. You right, feel right, me? Y'all yeah. love y'all love what y'all do. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? So take it to the next level, like, you feel me? Like, so I feel that And I know it's hard to deal with a nigga like me sometimes, so I know y'all love what y'all do. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> you've been in it since I was a young, you feel me? I was a young, I was a little boy since you've been in the game. You feel me? And you still here. So a lot of motherfuckers that I used to listen to, they ain't here no more. But you still pushing a hard line. Still going. I feel more. like you just getting started. You feel me? Come on, <laughs> bro. For real, Come on, man. you young, bro. 30, bro, you said 36? Come on, bro. You young, bro. To me, that's dope because you've been doing your music thing. You signed a Richie Rich at a young age, and you opening businesses which you could pass down to your kids because you can't job, pass a job down to your kids, but you could just pass a business down to they kids. They they gonna run it, and then you feel me? You keeping your legacy running, bro, forever. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty dope. You feel that's, me? That's what it's all. That's yeah. what it's all about. That's what like that's what school don't teach you. Bro. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Like school don't teach you generational wealth. Right. They get property. You teach how to be a good employee, but not no that's good it. business. That's owner, it. Right? That's it. Yeah.
Yeah, that's that's peace, man. Did you is that something? Well, yeah, you saw dope when you was young, but you knew you at a very young age growing up. Like, oh, I want to open up some business maybe when I get older in life. I just knew you don't have to be a fucking rocket scientist. It's, it's just it's, it's just numbers, like right. like percentages. Right. How many dope dealers you know really just made it out and live happily ever after? Yeah. Right. That's it. Feel me? Man. Right. How many niggas you know? Who was out robbing motherfuckers, jacking motherfuckers, killing motherfuckers that's just retired right now? Like, come to my Christmas party. <laughs> <laughs> you feel like, how hey, many do you know? Real, real, so, real. you know what I'm saying? Like, that's a really good ass way to look at it, man. That's everything is, 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 a, is, is a stepping stool. You right. feel me? Like, selling dope is, for me, yeah. I feel like. Selling dope was like college to me. Like that was like that was that was me going to college. Right. And then me graduating into a man right. opening businesses and right. investing my money and right. that's me graduating. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? That's how I look at it. That's the mentality I had of it. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's tight. Right? High school, the block, the industry. Right. In there. And now it's Play bad shit. businesses, you feel me, yeah, full-time, yeah. man, shit. Hell yeah. If, if anybody in the game right now that's mainstream, who would you want to collab with um, like in the game? Like, if you had a chance, like, oh, I'd probably even want to make a song with him. He, he make a music. Like, saying, like, Jay-Z or somebody like that. Like, a dope collab to me probably would be, like, like, me and, and, and... Jay-Z and DMX were like Drake singing a hook or something. Hey, I ain't gonna lie, that'd be, hey, that'd be dope. Well, yeah, right? <laughs> so, I remember talking about it, like some New Year's story, some crazy stuff that happened. What was you saying? What was that about? This was probably like, damn, this was probably like maybe 10, 11 years ago. But, uh, I had a show <laughs> in Seattle on New Year's Eve. So, we all went out there. Me, Blood, Shady, I think Stevie went. Everybody went, I think, except for Phil. But we all, we all went out there. A few of my niggas from the hood, a few of my cousins. Jay Diggs was out there. It was lit. It was lit. Yeah. It was lit. It was lit. Yeah. It was lit. It was lit. I think Diggs knocked the nigga out that night, too. I'm on stage performing, right? I think I'm performing, nigga. We scared. It's going crazy, nigga. <laughs> Stop performing, they doing a countdown, nigga, it's finna be, nigga. So, my cousin, this nigga on stage, this nigga whip, this nigga whip out his dick. Start getting sucked by the bitch in the crowd. You know how the stage is up a little bit from, from the crowd. So, you know how they face could be right there. Right, right, right. So, her face, is, it just fit perfect. So, this nigga just, <laughs> this nigga gets sucked while I'm performing from a bitch in the crowd. So, Come anyway. On. After the, after the, it's, mind you, it's New Year's Eve, so, you right. know, it's, it's popping, everybody celebrates, so after the club, yeah. after the club, you know, we got a after party at the hotel, you yeah. know, after the club, it's the after party, right. and we had to double tree, <laughs> nigga, like, downtown, we had to double tree at uh, SeaTac, we had to double tree, nigga, we got a minivan, so, we get in the minivan, like, maybe, like, Four or five of us get in the minivan. Like we like three cars deep. Like four or five of us get in the minivan. My cousin, this this nigga with me. So the bitch that sucked his dick get in the van. <laughs> Her sister get in the van. Like two, three more bitches get in the van. So we in a van. He never seen the bitch sister. So he see the bitch sister. He on the bitch sister. Woo 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 bitch. Woo woo woo. He high. Woo woo bitch. Woo bitch. I eat your pussy right now. Woo woo. Nigga, my other cousin like. Nigga, you tripping, nigga. Like, nigga, you tripping, nigga. Like, like, nigga, what you talking about eating bitches pussy? Nigga, like, nigga, we from the town, nigga. Like, nigga, what you tripping, nigga? Me? I'm like, no. Nah. I'm like, no, nah, that nigga high. That nigga wanna be high, catting off. Let that nigga eat that bitch pussy, nigga. Man, that bitch. So you know how many vans is with with the with the no, both seats on the back. Daddy. They got the two seats right here, the two seats right here, and the two. Man. She sitting all the way in the back. Man, that bitch put one foot up on each seat like Damn. this nigga. And that nigga went in. The bitch the crap. sister. <laughs> wow. Not the bitch that sucked his dick. This the bitch. So the bitch like, I just sucked your dick. You eat my sister pussy. Yeah, that's yeah. So anyway, man. <laughs> we get to the hotel. This No, look. We get to the hotel, man. We get to the hotel. Everybody get in the elevator, nigga. We go up to the room, nigga. 
this nigga start fucking the sister in the elevator. Not the one who pussy he just ate. The one who just sucked his dick on stage. He wow. started fucking her in the elevator. And everybody in the same elevator. Yeah. And we all in the elevator together. He started hey, fucking her in the is. elevator. Right. That's this elevator. is what's going on. In, in 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 the van I'm in right, and right, the elevator right. I got in. Right, right, you right. feel me? Yeah, this was going on. <laughs> so you feel me, nigga? Everybody get up to their room, nigga. Everybody go separate ways or whatever. Yeah. Then, nigga, all of a sudden, so the hotels is the rooms is in my name. Mm. So I, cause I, I booked them all on my credit card, cause he's all my niggas, and yeah. I was like ten rooms, so no, no, like seven rooms. So anyway, nigga. They come knocking on my door, boo, 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 boo. All you guys gotta go. I'm like, what you mean? Like, I got seven rooms here, what you mean? Like, they're like, yeah. But if one gotta go, all gotta go. Man, this nigga done got kicked out the room, out the hotel with the bitches. I don't know what they did. Wow. This nigga done got everybody kicked out the room. They would've been steamed rice, bro, boy. It's like four o'clock in the morning, bro. We walking down this, so SeaTac, and, and, and like, have you, if you ever been to SeaTac, you know, that's the whole straw. Right, yeah, like, yeah. Where, like, by the airport where all them hotels yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that's the whole straw. Bruh. We like 10, 12 deep walking all down the whole straw. I fall in the morning <laughs> with our luggage, nigga. It's New Year's Eve, Dang. so all the rooms booked up. Like we had to find a rinky dinky ass motel to go live to go. Uh, I think we, I think they had some a few rooms at the Comfort Inn or some shit like that, blood. Man, man, that's hella boozy. I would've been mm. high, bro. At least your cousin had a good night, shit. Man, that nigga did it all black. Hey, yeah. it's like, look, nigga, he the only one who don't want to forget that New Year's. Yeah. <laughs> it was horrible for right, everybody right, else right. but him. him. Yeah, he was fucking with it. You feel he me? Was, right. it lit. <laughs> I would've been high if I was you, though, getting kicked out. Four in the morning. It's crazy the cops never rolled up because they, they could have like, like, what the fuck y'all doing? Yeah, like, man, I mean, they had like, a, they had like, a bad we, enough night anyway. We just got kicked out of our room. Right. So, right. You know what I'm saying? Try to find some place to go. Man, thank you for taking the time out to, you know, talk to us, bro, chop game with us and talk about your experiences uh, throughout your career and what you got going on. Because I know you don't do that with everybody, so it's a privilege to, you know, for sit sure. down yeah. and, and chop it up with you, bro. Yeah. Thank you for everybody watching. Tune in. Go get his latest projects on all digital platforms. Go get the Bluetooth speaker, man. Come on, pull up to his Livewire Barbershop. Sound <laughs> Entertainment on the YouTube. Yeah, yeah, man. And we out.